Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. Let's talk about getting rich in America today. It's 2020. I've been sick. Today was the first time I left my house in a week. I have COVID, but I have the mild case of COVID. No hospital, no ventilator, none of that stuff. But it's uh, interesting. It's interesting. But during my healing up period, I've been really, really thinking, thinking about what can you do to get rich in America? And I feel the one thing you need to do is leave these hype machines. Right now, there's a hype machine going on about Airbnb. But if you don't believe me, check Airbnb Facebook groups, check Airbnb uh, online boards, check Airbnb comments on Reddit. There are many, 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 many people who are suffering who are in the Airbnb space. If you have a condo or something in Florida near Disneyland, you might be fine. But if you have a log cabin in Idaho, maybe a little bit different, maybe a little bit difficult. And one of the things that I consistently see is that people want to pile into certain business models. At one point, trucking was the rage and then the trucking market completely shifted. And one of the things that I like, uh, I'll share something with you. I am working on a long-term project. I've invested about $11,000 into this project, far less than when I invested in the uh, car rental business. And, you know, this is something that's going to be going on for quite a while because uh, and I'll be talking about it intimately with my intellectual property school students, digital nomad students, because that's where this stuff lies. But what can the average person in America do to get wealthy in a fairly quick time frame. First of all, one must become rich before they become wealthy unless they just win a hundred million in a lottery or something like that. So what is rich? Rich is $250,000 gross annual income. That's the beginning of rich. Now that allows you, you if you want to, you could buy a million dollar house. You can send your kids to private school. You could do a lot with that income range. Wealth starts at 3.5 to 5 million. And what can the average person do or a better question is what is available to the average person that they can facilitate developing wealth and the stock market marketing department has wholesale identified that participating in the markets is a way to get rich then wealthy over a very long period of time. Uh, I wanna share a story with you. 2012 is when I got wealthy, adjusted for inflation. I was able to do whatever I wanted to do. I actually retired for three months. So that's the kind of money I was dealing with. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Unless you are a person who just is completely miserable doing what you're doing, retirement isn't, or it shouldn't be the goal. The main goal is to get control of your time. And that is something that I have become very addicted to having control of my time, doing what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. That has become very, very addictive for me. Now, one of the things that you should work on, and I'm going to be doing some very different training. Uh, I have a client who hired me to help her establish a company, which we did. Company does about 10 million a year 
And this is the thing. This woman has never, she has a cleaning service. She's never cleaned the toilet. She's never mopped the floor. She has always been in the management position of her company. And that's a lot of training that we're going to get into because, you know, there are 32 million small businesses in America and the overwhelming majority of them are one person uh, businesses because folks don't know how to hire. They don't know how to manage. And more importantly, they don't want to to learn. I literally had this friend who had a small business who was somewhat of a control freak. And I was like, if you would hire people and you would delegate, you could make way more money. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I would lose that personal fester touch. As far as I know, he's still doing what he was doing. But one of the things that is happening because uh, I've got a video that's going to drop on my other channel talking about the craziness that is happening with real estate. The thing is that you should be aware of is the average person with the average income is not going to be able to afford a moderate American lifestyle. This is some place we're heading. I would say we will be there 10 years or less, whereas the average person with the average income will not be able to afford a house. Car prices are going to be stupid. And what we're going to find ourselves in very much a renter nation. And if you do not want to be part of that collective, if you don't want to be part of that situation where you've got to take whatever you can get because you cannot afford whatever you want. It's a very dicey, tricky situation to be in, but I'm here to let you know what's coming. I'm here to let you know what is happening. And we're, we're gonna get into some very different kind of training. We're gonna get into some very different um, tactics we're going to get into some very different um, possibilities. We're going to get into a different level of thinking because, like I said, I haven't left the house in a week and I've been ordering, you know, for me, being sick was an inconvenience. It wasn't a financial hardship. It was an inconvenience. I literally ordered food in, you know, since I had COVID. I intentionally didn't go anywhere, didn't want to expose anyone to anything. And for me, Netflixing, sleeping, and eating, I want you to be in that position the next time you get sick. That's all you got to worry about is food and eating. You don't like, I was sitting there thinking, what would I do if I had a regular job? And it's something I think about here and there because I've not had... I've been self-employed longer than I've ever worked a job at this juncture. And it changes you. It changes you quite a bit. And I want that for the, the person who comes to this channel. And it's like I'm seeking guidance because once again, we got to leave the hype cycles because right now there's someone who's doing some Airbnb training and the Airbnb overall market is trash, but they're still selling this training. And incidentally, that's how they make the majority of their money, selling the Airbnb training, not actually running Airbnbs. And this is something we consistently see over and over and over. And one of the things that you have to understand is there is no set it, forget it type business. Turo was supposed to be that business. Trucking was supposed to be that business. Airbnb was supposed to be that business. Uh, Amazon FBA was supposed to be those businesses. And this whole notion that you are somehow going to create passive income with a very small deployment of capital with little time and effort invested, because this is one of the things I consistently see, assets over liabilities. The average person doesn't have enough capital to buy assets. Now, let me be 100% clear about that. Do you have enough money to go out and buy dividend stock? Yes, you do. You go out and get a handful of dividend stock shares that are assets that produce passive income. Now, the question is, how much dividend stock would you need to 
replace your income. Typically, you're going to need $1.5 to $3 million of dividend stock to replace your income. Passive income doesn't come cheap. I, I will share some with you and I've mentioned it before, but I never went into detail. I got into flipping houses and the first one I spent between buying the house and renovating the house 400,000. We sold that house for 470 after real estate commissions and splits and stuff like $20,000. This took eight months of my life. Actually, I was just the silent investor. I put the money in the deal and I didn't do any of the work. And right now, at the end of that process, I was very, very unhappy. There were cost overruns. Every time I turned around, someone was like, hey, we need more money. We need more money. We need more money. So we did another flip. But this time I changed. We had a written agreement and I wrote, I was like, that was, that agreement's over. This agreement, this is the new agreement. <coughs> so I took an active management position and I was on that property four to seven times a week. It was constantly, and also the negotiation of the property, which I did not participate in the negotiation of the first property. Got this property, they wanted 180, 190. I negotiated, I was like, look, 150,000, cash money, close in seven days. Take it or leave it. And I got off the table and left, because I was like, because you know, there was other houses I was looking at, because one of the things I learned from the first time was we overpaid for that house. When you buy something, that's when you make your money, not when you sell it. So this time I was like, that was the first critical mistake. And the second critical mistake, my so-called partner wasn't a good manager. So they, we got the house for 150 and this time, I was on the contractors. I was really watching the budget and there were some ideas that they wanted to do. And I was like, we're not doing that. And got this house done for about 210 and was able to flip it for 350. Now, that time after all fees and splits and stuff, I walked away with $90,000. However, this was like a six month project and uh, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm gonna share some with you. This was about a six month project. I was heavily involved, I was actively involved and I came to a conclusion as we were at the closing table, I got that check. I did not enjoy the process of buying a house, renovating the house, or flipping a house. Uh, there are many people here on YouTube who make it seem to be extremely sexy. They make it seem to be really easy. And I didn't find it, none of that stuff. Even though I didn't lose money on my two real estate flips, I found out it was something I just didn't want to do. And this is where I'm going with this. Why would you get involved in a business that you don't want to do at some point in the future? Same thing with the car rental business. I despise the car rental business. I used to call my renters my needy children. I mean, it's like, oh, I need an oil change. I need a, I need a tire. I, just needy, 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 needy. I, I hated that because here's the thing. When you set up a business, what's the goal? To create a good product or service. That's the goal. What is the secondary goal? To make as much money as possible. What is the third goal? To have a lot of free time as a business owner. And one of the things that I'm seeing with uh, trucking, what I'm seeing with Amazon FBA, what I'm seeing with Toro, what I'm seeing, once you, because you know, there, there was a host here on YouTube, I'm not mentioning her name. Once her fleet scaled up to 22 cars, it went from very much part-time because I had 31 cars. It was a full-time job managing that fleet between checking in cars, getting them washed, maintenance, insurance claims. It was always something going on. And what I want for you is to set up a business the way that my client did. Why don't I ever bring her up? You know, I've talked about it and people want me to bring her on YouTube and to um, talk about her success. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna, going to do that. Me doing that is not going to help you. And I'm about to explain why. Number one, my client 
was married. Her and her husband made $150,000. But how did I get in the picture? She had a family relative pass away and leave her $50,000. And she used that $50,000 to hire me. That's how that happened. So she had plenty of money on the table to get this business started. Whereas the average person who comes to my YouTube channel doesn't have that. So for me to go ahead and it's like, hey, this is just what she did. She built this $10 million business in three years and she was not a typical person because she had cash money. As far as I know, she has good credit. We never, we never actually got into the credit conversation. She's never used credit to scale her business. She used credit to, um, actually that's not true. She didn't, she bought three cleaning vans in one week and she paid cash. Three cleaning vans in one week and she paid cash. So this is one of the reasons that, you know, I was sitting there, like like I said, I've been sleeping, napping, watching TV, Netflix and out all week. One of the things that I've come to understand is for you to be successful, you need the truth. You need honest, open, direct communication and none of this bubble gum stuff. You know, it's like, I give you this, this ball of gum, right? And it's, you start chewing on it and it's good in the beginning, but what happens to gum? It goes stale the more you chew it. So I want to give you a meal, a delicious meal where bite after bite is good. So we're getting ready to do a whole different level of training, a whole level, different level of <laughs> getting activated here because I am the product of a single mother. I did not grow up with money. I did grow up with some favorable circumstances because I grew up in a time when working hard was a norm. Working hard was part of the process. And many, many people do not understand that, don't know what that is, but this is what we got. I've got hustle camp. Hustlecamp.org is the foundational beginning rookie training. Like you've never had a business before, that's where you should start. And then I have some more elevated situations and more specific things for people who are in different situations. Because once again, it's 2023. I already know that a lot of people who watch this channel, bless you, don't have a lot of money. So it doesn't make sense for me to offer or to dangle over your nose these higher levels of training when I know that you do not have the capital to deploy this stuff. And I'm not gonna tell you to go out and get a loan. I'm not gonna tell you to go out and run up your credit cards. I'm not gonna tell you to do that. I would tell you if you're in a financially dangerous situation and you need money fast, I would tell you to get another job. I will not tell you to sign up for any of my courses until you're financially stable. So that's where you should start. It's with hustlecamp.org. And I'm going to give you the manhood training. You know, as I get better, we're going to start rolling out more training. We're going to start doing more, but it'll be in the first comment below. So let's get active. Let's start making moves. Let's start building things because because what's going to happen in the future is not going to be nice. It's not going to be kind to the average person.